Good morning and welcome to the online open day of the Han University of Applied Sciences. My name is Tommaso, former student of international business at the Han, and I will be your host for this morning. We have a very thrilling day ahead of us with four live show question sessions and also a lot of Instagram lives. So make sure that you check on our website where the program is for today so that you can join all of the sessions that we have and get to know a little better what we offer here at the Han University of Applied Sciences. In this very first session, we will be talking about classes, campus, and student support. I will not be doing this by myself as I'm joined by Miruna and Jessica. Welcome, you guys. Thank you for partaking in this session. First, let's get to know you a little bit. Miruna, let's start with you. You're a student here at the Han. Would you mind introducing yourself, where you're from, and what you're doing? Yes, of course. Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Miruna. I'm from Romania. Currently, I'm in my first year uh, studying international business. Welcome and thank you for being here. How about you, Jessica? Yes, hello everyone. My name is Jessica. I'm a communication alumna from the Han and now I'm working at the Han. Okay. And I'm German. And you're from Germany. Excellent. Yes. So here you go, already like three different nationalities on okay. this uh, very studio. Excellent. Uh, so Miruna, what was the prime reason for you to study at the Han? All right, so I have a story about this. Let's hear it. Um, I remember I was in the 10th grade and uh, I didn't know where I want to go to university. And um, I asked my parents, okay, let's go to a university fair in uh, Bucharest. And uh, yeah, I remember I went to every single university to see what they have to offer there. And um, when it came to Han, uh, I just had a click with the university. And I turned around to my parents and said, all right, here is where I want to go. And uh, back then it was a dream. And now I'm living my dream. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's really, really nice to hear. What made that click happen to you when you were at this fair? Well, uh, the lady with whom I was speaking was really, really nice. And everything was clear, the procedure, every, everything. And I said, OK, I really like uh, this university. So here I am. <laughs> Excellent. That's fantastic to hear. So in the first part of this session that we're hosting right now, we will be talking about classes. So we will be discussing some of the practicalities of what it's like to really take a class uh, here at the Han University. Uh, so would you be able, Miruna, to describe a little bit what your average week of classes looks like? All right. So a normal day looks like spending um, from four to five hours at university, so no more than five hours, let's say. And uh, we also have a free day, uh, besides the weekend, of course. So only four days uh, per week we are going to university. And the average hours is like, let's say, 20, something like that. So 20 hours of classes, basically, 20 right? hours of okay. classes and uh, 10 hours of uh, self-study at home. Okay, fantastic to hear. So what I gather from this is that you would also be able to have some free time um, on the side. Okay, that's great. Fantastic. Um, now, Jessica, with you, I have a different question because um, the Han University of Applied Sciences, um, we hear applied sciences within the term, yeah. right? And we also know, maybe some of the viewers know, maybe some of the others don't, that here in the Netherlands you have two different types of universities, also universities of research right. amongst. Would you be able to explain to us what the difference is between those two yes, universities? Let me show you a little slide for that. Great. Yeah. So as you can see on the left side, we have the research universities and on the right side, we have the University of Applied Sciences. A little bit of difference is definitely the duration. As you can see, a bachelor at a research university takes three years and a master uh, and a bachelor at uh, Applied Sciences takes four years. This is because uh, a bachelor at a University of Applied Sciences, like the name already says, is really applied. So students will have to do an internship. They can go abroad. They will have a minor. So really to have the knowledge that they gain already applied. Uh, after that, you can do at both universities a master. Uh, you can also switch from an applied university to a research university and then also do your master. So it really does not matter where you start. It's really more of a, a fit for yourself. While at a research university, we're really looking into the why. Uh, we're looking at an applied university of more of the how. So as I said already, you have the hands-on knowledge, you gain it in class and you directly apply it. That's a little bit of a difference. So if you 
type of person, yeah, that really likes to apply directly what they learn, then it's definitely a good fit for you. Yes, and thank you very much for explaining this difference because at least for me, uh, I don't know if for you, Miruna, was also likewise, but at the beginning it was, it took a little while to understand what the, what the difference is. And I think that this slide that you have just shown like presents really well what the yeah. main uh, points of each universities are. Excellent. So uh, what we heard from you is that the Han, a, a university like the Han is more so uh, practice based. Yeah. Miruna, would you be able to explain to us like what is the difference that you notice between uh, practice and theory within your classes? So the division between practice and theory is like, um, I think 60% is theory, then 30 or 35% is uh, practice. And we also have a 5% uh, the time spent with our coach. Excellent. Yes, and that's of course done also depending on what you're studying. So you at the moment studying business. If you're studying uh, engineering or one of the uh, life sciences chemistry programs, then the split could be a bit different, but it's always around 60-40, 50-50. Indeed, and that's also what I do recall from my own studies, as a matter of fact. Now let's talk about exams a little bit, shall we? Uh, Miruna, what are the exams like for you here at the Han? So here at Han, we have a variety of exams. For example, we have presentations, oral exams, portfolios, and also written exams. Um, the written exams are um, digital exams, so you, you have to bring your own computer. And uh, a presentation, I think it's no longer than 10 to 15 minutes. Excellent. Thank you for, for sharing with us what, what they look like. But then, uh, how are they graded? Jessica, would you be able to yes. inform us a little on how the grading system looks like here? Yes. So Marina already talked a little bit about some types of exams that we do have. We do also, of course, have different types of exams depending on what you're studying. So there, it's always best to ask the program itself on how the exams look like. Uh, I do have a grading system for everyone. Uh, great, yeah. So on the left you see the Dutch grading system. Uh, a pass is a 5.5 and the best grade is a 10. You can a little bit see it as 55% to pass, 100% is the best grade of course. So it's a little bit of uh, how you can see it. Excellent. And what I find really interesting also from the slide that we were just showing is that um, the percentage of um, or the, the like ability of getting yes, a, a grade like above an eight is actually quite difficult. And I think yes. that's also information that is quite nice to know up front because maybe compared to other universities across the world, it can um, it can work a little differently here. It's actually really Indeed. rare to have a, a grade of, yeah. like above an eight. Would you be able to confirm, Miruna? Is, has it been difficult for you to score really high on your tests? Well, it's a, a really big difference from uh, high school to university, mm -hmm. of course, because um, even if no one told you uh, that in university you have to work harder than in high school, well, you can, you can see this, that you have to work to have like bigger grades. Yeah. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, it was a little bit hard uh, at first, but then you get used to everything. So I think uh, all the good things uh, need time. Indeed, I couldn't agree more. Let's talk about internationality now. So yes. how international is the Han really? Yes, so we have approximately 10% internationals and 100 different nationalities. That said, we do have a lot of different um, Dutch degrees as well. So when it comes down to how international will your class look like in the end, for me personally, when I studied, it was around, we had two, three uh, Dutch students. It was a higher mix on uh, internationals than actually uh, Dutch in the end. Very I don't interesting. know how it was for you. Well, we are 21 students in my class and I think we are 12 or 13 uh, nationalities. Yeah. That's fantastic to hear. I mean, like even just for the viewers at home, even just in yeah. the studio, we're sitting three different nationalities and neither of us is, is Dutch even. So y you know already that, that the Han can be a very international environment. But like you said, Jessica, it's also very important to notice that it may depend on yeah. the, the program that you decide to select. But speaking of internationality, what I really liked about my own program at the Han is that you have basically endless opportunities to go abroad. So let, let's Great. hear about that. Like, uh, how can you go abroad during your studies? Yeah, so we do, for instance, have study abroad. Um, I myself, I went to Finland during my study abroad. It was an absolute amazing experience. 
But uh, yeah, I could imagine maybe the uh, viewers have a destination where they want to go still. So if that is the case, they can scan a QR code, which you can see in the uh, slide that's now shown. Uh, we do have more than 330 partner universities, and we also do have more than 50 different partner countries. So yeah, you name it, we probably have a partner there. So wherever you do want to go, it is possible. On top of your study abroad, you can also, of course, depending on your study, do a minor abroad, meaning you can do an internship or a project uh, with a company abroad as well. Indeed. And do you have any uh, going abroad types of plans, Miruna, for the, for the future? Well, I was thinking about New Zealand uh, because I really want to experience uh, the Christmas during the summer. <laughs> it sounds like uh, something super surreal, right? Yes, indeed. Amazing, amazing. All right, so I think this wraps up really well our little segment on the different um, classes and opportunities that you would have here at the Han. I will take this moment to remind you that you are able to ask any questions that you would like to from the chat box of, the, of this live stream, and you will be taking some time at the end of every session to answer to those questions. So please go ahead. If anything is a little unclear during the session, please make sure that you have your questions being asked. Now, with this being said, let's talk about the campus. Uh, so, Miruna, what was your first impression of the campus here at the Han when you first arrived? Well, I think um, everyone uh, would say that, oh, you first arrived here in August, but uh, I first came here in uh, February 2022 for a student for a day. I really wanted to see if I liked the university and, uh, of course, uh, I did the best decision in my life so far. <laughs> and um, yeah, I remember it was raining the entire week uh, <laughs> back then, but in August everything was like, it was super hot and uh, I was uh, thinking, oh, maybe I won't get used to the weather, but it wasn't my case. And uh, yeah, the city is uh, small, compact, let's say, um, and uh, yeah, it, it's really pretty. I, I feel here like home. Good to hear that you had such a fantastic first impression, really, of the campus and also of the city. Uh, we're talking about Arnhem, uh, just for the viewers at home, because the Han has uh, campuses both yeah. in Arnhem and Nijmegen. Um, but then you also mentioned this student for a, a day activity, which I'm really drawn to. Would you be able to explain to us really briefly like what that entails? Of course. So it, it's a special day for... Um, people or uh, future students who want to experience um, the university uh, environment and uh, see if uh, what uh, is done here really fits their needs. And uh, I remember that I took part in uh, four uh, courses and uh, a tour of the university was provided by, uh, by the students. Great. And speaking of a tour of the university, Jessica, would you yeah. be able to give us a, a virtual tour of what sure. the university looks uh, let's like? Let's show some pictures for that. Great. There we go. Yeah. So as you can see, the campuses are really light. We have a lot of windows in there. Um, we have all kinds of facilities that you need for your studying. So on the left, for instance, you see the labs in case you're interested in life sciences or chemistry. And then on the top, uh, you see part of our library. Uh, which also gives a really nice atmosphere to, to motivate to study. But we do also have environments where you can just hang out, meet your friends, because it is, of course, a good balance between studying, but also, uh, yeah, just mingling, matching, getting to know other people. Um, on the right top, you see, for instance, uh, one of the student cafes, which we have, where you can have a drink with your friends. But we also do have cafes. We have uh, cafeterias where you can get your lunch. Um, so in both campuses, you have all the facilities that you would need. Amazing. How about sporting facilities? Are there any? Yes, we do have sporting facilities also on campus. Uh, we have a gym here. But uh, that said, 
um, the campus here in Arnhem, just to, mm -hmm. to put that down, um, that said we have different sport activities for both of the campuses. So in Nijmegen, we have a collaboration with uh, another university there, and there you can take all kinds of classes. I think they're like, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 classes. It's a, it's a lot of classes you mm -hmm. can take, uh, where you can do soccer, Zumba, whatever you like, but there's also a gym. And then here in uh, Arnhem, you have uh, also a sport card which you can get for a really small price and um, there you can also visit all kinds of facilities within Arnhem. Fantastic. Yeah, I remember during my studies I used to have one of those subscriptions and it was yeah. really great because you had so many different opportunities to go to a swimming pool, for example, Indeed. go to different classes and, and courses and also try out a lot of different things. And same goes for the campus in Nijmegen, yeah. in fact. And it's just um, very amazing the outstanding number of different opportunities and activities that you can actually partake I'm happy in. To hear that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And Miruna, I've heard from you uh, a previous time that one of your favorite spots on campus is the study center. Is that correct? Yes, it is. And why do you like it so much? Well, when I see a lot of students studying and um, they are motivated to study, I also feel motivated and really want to surpass myself and, of course, um, have better and better grades than before. Yes, of course, that, that makes sense. And what is your favorite spot on campus, Jessica? Yeah, I would say it's the hangar. It is a cafe spot. So what I like so much about it is everyone comes there to just have a chat, to really yeah, process the day and uh, get to know other people. Mm -hmm. And speaking of places where you can eat or drink something, are there any other um, places where you, can, where you can go to or where you normally go to? Yeah, I mean, definitely, we do have a lot on campus. Mm -hmm. So we have cafes, we have uh, student bars, we have restaurants. It's really depending on which campus you are, but each campus does facilitate some sort of uh, food and drinks. Excellent. Do you have anything that you would like to add regarding this session on the, on the campus facilities, either of you? Well, I think another uh, spot where you can just uh, talk with your friend or hang out with them uh, is the base camp. Um, you can go there and maybe work on different projects or just to spend some time between classes. And what is the base camp really? Is that like a room or...? So it's a special uh, room. Um, actually, there you can find a lot of international students. And um, it's the home for uh, our uh, association. And we do also have that for some of the other degrees. So, yeah. for instance, in Nijmegen, uh, we have international social work, and they also have, for instance, something called like DOASIS. Mm -hmm. So, uh, a lot of the degrees do have their own kind of kind of spot to meet and match. Fantastic. And we do not just mention the association, and we will learn about the associations in just a second. But I will take this opportunity to wrap up this segment on um, campus. Uh, and so far, we have learned, in fact, like more or less how the classes look like, what you can expect from examination, but also what you can expect from the split between theory and practice, self-study, and study on campus. And we've also mentioned a little bit like how um, the campus, both in Arnhem and Nijmegen, look like. Now, to move on to our final part of this uh, morning session, uh, we would like to talk about student support and what you can expect from that. So, Jessica, first question is for you. Um, how does the HAN facilitate student support overall? Yeah, so it's depending on what kind of student support the student needs in the end. Mm -hmm. um, we do have uh, career coaches, study career coaches, um, who are guiding the student on a personal but also on a professional level. Uh, and if they see that someone is not feeling so well, let's say they're homesick, etc., then they're looking into one of the many uh, student associations that maybe the student could join or just really help them settle down in the country. Let's say the student is uh, not only feeling homesick but not feeling that well, then uh, the Han Du also has um, coaches to sit together with them to see how they can further look into uh, mental well-being. Excellent. And um, Miruna, Jessica just mentioned a couple of uh, really interesting concepts that I also wanted to explore with you a little more in depth. Uh, so she mentioned the study career coach or this figure uh, that, that can help you with your studies. What has your experience been like with, um, with them? 
So I emailed them a couple of times because I wanted to make sure uh, for the second year I will uh, choose uh, my specialization correctly. And uh, they were really a great uh, help uh, with that. And uh, they are also really nice. Um, you can either email them or uh, meet them uh, in the campus. Excellent. And, and what other type of uh, help have they provided you with besides uh, guiding you a little towards your specialization? Well, um, of course, as Jessica mentioned before, if you feel, um, if you are homesick, then uh, they can f uh, find for you um, a special um, organization, so based mm -hmm. on your nationality, to hang out with them. Excellent, that's great to hear. And this is actually leading me to something else that I wanted to ask you because Jessica, you also mentioned uh, student associations yeah. and different uh, affiliation groups that you can consider. Um, have you joined any of these associations during your studies so far? Um, well, yes. Uh, right now I'm a member of uh, ISB, which is International School of Business. And what do you do as a member of the International School of Business? So we organize a lot of um, events, um, workshops, movie nights, um, painting, uh, trips to another cities, and so on. And would you say that being a member of ISB also helped you get to know other people around campus and um, extend your, your network and friendships? Of course, yeah. of course. I mean, um, there you can be, um, you can feel at home um, among strangers and then they become later your family. That's fantastic to hear. Uh, now let's talk about getting assistance with um, a potential employment or a student job. Um, yeah. Jessica, are there, is there any type of support that one student can expect in relation to that? Yes, so when we're looking into student jobs as a side jobs during the time, mm -hmm. we do always recommend to not work in the first year just because the first year is a well, really challenging year and you need to make sure that you get all of your credits that you're allowed to move on to the next semester, to the next year. Uh, if you do want to take a, a side job, there are some organizations who help you with finding it, especially targeted for international students. Um, but there are also many other uh, jobs you can do in the, we call them Horeca industry, mm -hmm. which is basically an industry that is focusing on restaurants, um, etc. So there you will definitely find a job um, next to your degree. Uh, when you're looking more into a job in terms of an internship, that you maybe need to do for your degree or a job afterwards. The HAN also facilitates uh, some sort of portal where we have partnerships with um, organizations where you can see if there's maybe a vacancy, an internship or a vacancy that you would be interested in. But we do also have career days. So then uh, companies come to the campus and they talk about uh, their company, their organization, what you can expect there so that you can already get a match. Yeah. So this would be a few of the um, possibilities. That said, what might be nice to, to add is uh, there is something called uh, the Econ Orientation Year. So if you are a non-European citizen um, and you are looking for a job, then you have one year time to do so uh, within the Netherlands. So the Netherlands gives you a year time to find that. But you can also say, hey, I would like to go home for a few years, not, not too many years. Uh, and then you can also come back and take that, that orientation year visa. Excellent. And thank you for, for mentioning this. We're also going to be talking more about this in the coming session that we have about admissions and visas. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really good point to, to have that uh, pointed out. And um, of course, for you, Miruna, it's still quite early to think about an internship because in your program, you have to do an internship in the third and fourth year. But are you already like, starting to go to these career days that Jessica just mentioned? Well, I'm looking forward mm -hmm. uh, to see what the companies have to offer there. Yes, of course. Yeah, but it's um, like you said, Jessica, it's also really, really interesting yeah. how this portal works because there is a lot of information being put there. I don't know if you have ever had an experience like looking into what's on the on the portal from the Han, but there is really a lot to, to look into. So that's uh, that's definitely great. 
Um, so before we dive into the Q&A and before we, list, we, we answer to the questions that the viewers from home have um, asked, is there anything else that you guys wanted to add, maybe in relation to the facilities, in relation to the support that you have been receiving here at the Han? Well, I think everything uh, was said. Mm -hmm. I'm just really yeah. curious what the, the audience has for questions. Yes, so are we. So let's first start with the, the number one question, which is how often are there assessments? So we're relating now back to the, um, to the segment on classes and exams. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jessica, would you like to answer that? That is this? really, really depending on your degree. So mm -hmm. in general, we have uh, exam periods, which are happening every seven seven weeks out of the top of my head now um, but there are also assessments during that time so depending on what you're studying you might be needing to hand in a portfolio or uh, you it could also be that you're working for a whole semester long on one project that's being graded in the end so this is really really specific on your program so therefore yeah. i'm not able to give you probably the the answer that you're looking for but uh, yeah it's really depending on your program there Yes, exactly. Indeed, it's uh, it's very relative to the program. I think if we really want to give like a a super quick answer to the question, maybe answering like you you did, it's uh, quite proper, I would say, because there is mostly like these four periods, right? Indeed, indeed. And they're called like term one, two, three, and four, and then you have uh, a fifth one for just uh, exams that you might have to retake. But again, it's it's relative. Would you be able to confirm, Miruna, based on what's been said so far? Well, yes, uh, and I think also the attendance is important to to classes because mm -hmm. if you don't attend a class, you will miss all the information, and uh, after that, it's really hard to catch up on everything you missed. And uh, I think it's better to do the assignment in the same week you receive them. Yeah. Yeah, very good point. Thank you for, for highlighting that. I, I couldn't agree more. That's definitely also very important. Now let's move on to the second question. Is there a Dutch course of Dutch as a second language? Who would like to take it? Yes, I will take this one because it's mm -hmm. different for the programs. So while we have, for instance, at um, business and communication, you can choose Dutch as a second language, part of your degree. Uh, the other degrees, they have something called a social Dutch class. So then you can uh, go from a beginner's level to a bit more intermediate level um, with a hunt for free. So that's also a possibility that they offer. And have either of you ever taken any of the, uh, the classes, either the one taken within the degree or the social Dutch course? Well, uh, not right now, but mm -hmm. uh, I really want to, to take them uh, next year. Excellent. And you, Jessica? Yes, I have taken the uh, Dutch class that was provided for doing my degree, but I heard that you did the social Dutch. Is that correct? I did the social Dutch indeed. And um, I did uh, one course of the social Dutch, uh, and I could already start from a bit of a higher level because nice. I had already lived here in the Netherlands for a couple of years back then. Um, and to be honest, I think that I learned quite a lot because what I liked the most about that class is that the teacher was only speaking Dutch mm -hmm. through and through. So was speaking with really simple words, of course, and, and was really ensuring that you would understand whatever she was saying or mentioning. But at the same time, um, it was so good just for the year to get used to, uh, to the Dutch language and to the Dutch sounds. But how was it for you to take the class that, that was in, like um, integrated within your program? Yeah, I do have to say uh, I, I'm German, so the languages are still quite similar to me. Mm -hmm. So I had a bit of an advantage there. But uh, yeah, we do really start at a beginner's level mm -hmm. and then I would say it's a really uh, good pace for people who are not coming from a, from a German language background. Excellent, great to hear. All right, now we have another question and this is going to, for, to be for you, Miruna. Okay. How is student life at the Han University and in Arnhem? Hmm, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, so you have enough time if you want to go out, but also I would recommend to focus on your study uh, first. Uh, of course, uh, maybe you will feel sometimes overwhelmed, but uh, we can uh, say that we were there also. And uh, uh, now uh, I realize that uh, so after more than half a year spent here, um, 
yeah, life here seems, I don't know um, how to exactly explain this because it's a feeling, you can only feel uh, this. Yeah. Uh, you have to be here, but um, um, you have a lot of opportunities. If you want to go out to spend some time alone, well, it's better to do that from time to time. Um, also, you can find uh, a lot of friends, um, even if you only go out for a walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the activities that Han provides, they are, they are really helpful. Definitely. And how do you like to invest your free time? What do you usually do when, you, when you're not studying or when you're not around campus? <laughs> Um, that's gonna be a funny answer because uh, when I was bored in high school, um, I I did a lot of math. Okay. So when I was bored, I I also studied. But here, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, here when I want to uh, to relax, I either go for a walk or a draw. Excellent. And Jessica, when you were uh, a student here in RM, did you also do maths when, when you no, were born? No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I wish, I wish, but uh, no, no, I would say that my uh, free time looked a bit differently. So I had um, a free travel card on the weekend, which you can buy for a really small amount. And I tried to see as much as possible from the Netherlands. I think almost every second weekend I was traveling with my friends. I've seen the most important cities here in the Netherlands by now. Love that. Did the, yeah, the total things that everyone wants to do, the Kuykehof, I saw the tulip fields, the windmills, uh, I went to the cheese festival. So everything that you can do that's typical Dutch, I did. Uh, I love going to movies. Every movie is in English here. Uh, I see a lot of movies in the theater. I have an unlimited card for that. <laughs> I also have an unlimited card for museums. So I've seen the Rijksmuseum and everything that yeah, students might want to see. I can really uh, recommend seeing and immersing really in the Dutch experience because, yeah, I'm now here for almost seven years and I cannot imagine living anywhere else by now. So it is really, uh, really a great country uh, to do really nice things. Any, any destination that you would recommend to the viewers at home of, out of all of the places that you've seen here in the Netherlands? Yeah, I would say my favorite city is definitely Utrecht. It's a bit less touristic than Amsterdam, so I really, really enjoy that one. And one thing that I do every year by now with my friends is some sort of ritual almost. Um, we have a national park uh, in Arnhem or close to Arnhem. It's called the Veluwe. And I hope I say it correct for all the Dutch people that might be seeing this. Um, it is beautiful in around, I think, July or August. Uh, everything is purple. All of the, the, the plants are turning purple there and you have the animals walking around. It's just a beautiful, nice, nice hike. Yeah, it's fantastic. And if you really come to study in Arnhem or Nijmegen, it's just like really... What, from Arnhem, maybe like 20 minutes away by, by bike? Yeah, it's from really Nijmegen, close maybe a by. tiny bit longer, but at the same time, it's just yeah. really, really cool. And I mean, in Nijmegen, you have this really known festival as well. So if you're into festivals, then yeah, uh, Nijmegen is known for it. So uh, you're definitely in uh, for a nice time. Yeah, there's definitely enough to do and um, enough to do if you are afraid of uh, getting bored, for sure. Let's move on to the following question. Uh, what does a study coach do? Is he or she easy approachable? Was he or she easily approachable to you, Miruna? Well, yes, every single class has uh, a study coach. And um, we also have uh, different uh, classes uh, during uh, the semesters and year with uh, them. Um, they provide uh, a lot of information, maybe uh, that we can miss, but uh, they make sure uh, we have uh, everything on a team channel. Uh, they are also really nice. You can uh, email them, uh, even call them if there is an emergency, or you can wait until you have a class with them. Mm -hmm. And I think this doesn't necessarily only apply to your example, because of course we're hearing one side of the story, mm -hmm. but to me this applied in the same exact way. And was same. it also for you, Jessica? Same. Yeah. Okay. I think the study career coach, they do also assignments with you to really focus on 
yeah, where do you want to go? Because it mm -hmm. doesn't matter what your which degree you're ending up studying here. With that degree, there are still lots of opportunities, directions that you can go to. So uh, I do think it's really nice to have someone that guides you through the process to really see what's the best fit for you. Indeed, I really agree. And and what I also liked about this figure is that at the beginning, um, at, at the beginning of my studies, personally. Um, they were asking me really critical questions also about what I had already chosen because, of course, choosing for university, and now I'm speaking like directly to the people at home, uh, it can be a really, really stressful period for sure um, because there's just like so much out there and you feel like you want to do everything at the same time. Um, but I think what's kind of relieving to also know is that even once you have already made your choice, there is still going to be someone that is going to make you think critically about what you have chosen and why and what you can get out of that study program or if you're still on time to maybe do a last minute mm -hmm. switch maybe still within the the program or maybe within the same university so that you're not really um losing credits or losing Indeed. um study time you know so that's uh that to me was also like a really meaningful uh part of the journey with the study career coach um, now we have another question which relates to the study materials which is something that we haven't really talked about too much during the session. Uh, can they be digitals or do they have to be um, on paper? Do they have to be books? Yeah, so that's also really depending on what you're studying. So mm -hmm. of course for a lot of the degrees we do recommend buying the books and there are of course definitely books but you can also have the PDF book, book if you like. But uh, then also on top of the materials that you might need to buy uh, in addition, we do also have presentations, the um, PDFs, all kinds of material that the teachers uh, are providing you for the classes. So I would say it's a mix of both. Yeah. How is it for you, Miruna? Did you buy your books or do you have them all on your laptop? Well, I bought the books, but I also have them uh, in PDF. Okay, and both. Yes, Perfect. both. <laughs> but I think it's better to have the books uh, because some of the exams are also open books uh, mm. exams. And uh, it, uh, they make your life easier. I agree. And when did you purchase your books? Was it before the beginning of classes or was it already when classes had already begun? I ordered them uh, before the beginning of classes, I think in August. And mm -hmm. uh, Han sent me an email um, in which everything was explained, uh, the steps. Uh, so how can I uh, buy the books? Yes, of course. And yeah. there are often also students from a higher grade that uh, are selling their books. So in case you don't want to buy your book uh, up front, then you can also look into uh, Facebook groups, etc. So you do have your books in time when you start studying. Yes, I, I do recall indeed from, from my studies that there, there was like um, a book market yeah. uh, at the beginning of the year uh, where, like you said, like all of the uh, students that had already completed the courses and just wanted to make a little bit of money were just like reselling their own books. And that, um, yeah. yeah, that is of course like another great way to, to, to deal with that. At the same time, I also recall that a couple of courses you still had indicated books but then at the end of the day you didn't end up using them so sometimes it's um, maybe for your first semester it could be ideal to have already everything prepared but maybe like as you move on in some cases you can also just wait until the beginning of classes to decide whether or not it is the case to uh, really order a book or if there is a PDF version available already so there's um, lots of different yeah. options um, but yeah um, I believe that those were mostly all of the questions that we nice. had from the listeners at home uh, and we wanted to thank you for asking those questions and please make sure that you keep on asking questions throughout the day that we have ahead of us. Um, and I also wanted to thank you and you guys so much for joining in this uh, session of the Open Day. I hope that you had a great time yes, talking about you. classes and thank student you. support. Yes, thanks again. Uh, we will see you in our next session, which is about admissions, visas and scholarships, as well as housing. So make sure that you stay tuned and thanks again. See you then.